You're listening to School Counseling Simplified, a podcast with easy to implement strategies for busy school counselors. Here's your host, Rachel Davis from Bright Futures Counseling. Hey listeners, let me let you in on a little secret. You don't have to stress about planning your class lessons, small groups, and individual sessions anymore. My school counseling membership program, Impact, is here to help. So, what do Impact members get? Monthly curriculum plans across all three tiers, SEL lessons, small groups, individual, and seasonal activities, step-by-step video implementation guides, bi-weekly Zoom coaching calls with me, and exclusive Facebook group community. This membership is designed for school counselors who want to deliver the best possible content to their students, but who also want to just press the easy button. You'll get access to monthly curriculum plans, resources, support, and community so you can deliver quality, engaging, life-changing counseling lessons to your kiddos. So what do you think? Are you ready to make an impact? Join today at stressfreeschoolcounseling.com slash impact. Hey there, thanks for listening to another episode of School Counseling Simplified. So today I want to share with you some ideas for planning school-wide initiatives. So you may be thinking, what is a school-wide initiative? It's basically any topic, character trait, or theme that you want to bring awareness to at your school site. So last week I shared some ideas for Bullying Prevention Month, and Bullying Prevention is an example of a school-wide initiative. You can get the whole school on board and do things not just through the counselor. Um, I mean, you can do things at the you know class level, small group, and individual level, but you can also get the teachers to do things in their classrooms. Um, you know, get the principal and admin on board to do some school-wide messaging around a topic. So this is cool because it's a way to really take what you're doing and 10x it. So you can only reach so many students and do so many class lessons and small groups as an individual. But if you can teach teachers to implement your strategies or the whole, you know, school as a whole to get on board with a common language or a common theme, um, then you can make big changes. Now, this does require a little planning. And of course, you're not going to do it like every month with a different topic, but maybe sit down with your principal and think about a few things you really want your school culture to focus on. So I'm going to give an example of how I've implemented a self-regulation school-wide initiative. So all my examples will be regarding self-regulation, and I think this is a wonderful one to do, especially at the elementary level. But I want you to think about a topic that you're passionate about or something you think your school could really benefit from and follow the same framework. Okay, so let's dive in. Establishing a common language gets everyone on board. So what I mean by when I say that is that you want to decide which terminology is important to you and educate everyone on how to use it. So in bullying prevention, I shared a little bit about um, bullying prevention terminology and how that's really important. But with self-regulation, that's the example I'm giving today, you know, we're talking about the different color zones, right? So we want the kiddos to really understand the different colors and to identify their feelings. So we want them to learn some feelings, words, and how they relate to each color category. So First, you want to educate everyone on the terminology that you would like them to use. So not only do you want to educate the students on this through your class lessons, but you want to educate the teachers, so perhaps doing like a mini PD session, and you want to educate all support staff. So we're talking like custodian, lunch lady, um, recess duty person, parapro, Um, Anyone who is at the school working with the kiddos, you want everyone to get on board. And here's what it would look like in action. Your student would already know what the self-regulation colors signify from his teacher's introduction or from a counseling class lesson. Now, a class lesson, that's pretty doable. You can go in and teach this to everyone. Or it would be even cooler if you could kind of teach the teachers and then have them teach the kiddos because then they could reinforce it daily in the classroom or bring up examples. So let's say the student already knows the colors of the zones, um, and then they're angry at recess, and they react by hitting another child. But then the recess duty person also knows this. So instead of just disciplining the child, they would say, hey, what zone were you in? And they may answer red. Of course, they're still going to have consequences, but we're still teaching them about these self-regulation awareness and strategies. So then he may have to go see the principal, and then the principal can talk about the consequences of his action, but remind them it's okay to feel angry or red, 
but it's not okay to hit others. So later, you know, maybe after receiving the discipline, he comes back to the counselor and you kind of have like a conversation about everything that happened. And then you can talk about some coping strategies he could use next time. So do you see how that's really full circle? So whereas before, what often happens is like we might see a kid once a week and we teach them a coping strategy, but then it's not reinforced anywhere else. But a school-wide initiative gets everyone on board with these coping strategies and this emotional identification. So again, you know, the teacher introduced the term, the student knew it, the recess duty person acknowledged it and made them name the feeling and the problem when the conflict happened. Then the principal, even though, you know, acting as the disciplinarian was still talking about how it's not, it's okay to feel that way, but not okay to hit others. And then finally, back to you, the counselor, you wrap it all up by sharing some preventative coping strategies to try in the future. Um, So hopefully this doesn't happen again. So that's a really cool way to kind of wrap the student in support, um, like a full circle of support. So they don't just hear something one time, because how can we expect our students to hear something one time and then remember how to do it, right? It totally takes a village. So another thing you can do, um, so that's kind of a reactive, like in the moment, how we would do this. But obviously, we're all about prevention and being as proactive as possible. So a few things you can do are use visuals to implement self-regulation school-wide. So again, I'm giving you self-regulation examples, but you can use visuals for any example. So think in your head what you really want your school to focus on. Um, But what I did is we used bulletin boards and class posters. So you can have a bulletin board in your office. You could have one in the hallway. I think any common area, the lunchroom, um, the gym, just reminding everyone of the different emotions and different coping strategies. And then teachers, you could provide them with a class set that they could hang in their classrooms. So that's a really cool idea. Um, You know, when the kids are waiting for lunch or standing in the hall in line, they can look at the wall and just kind of, I remember when I was younger, always reading the bulletin boards and they can kind of look and read them and just constantly be reminded of the language we want them to use and coping strategies we want them to try. Um, Another thing, you know, is if the kids are in a crisis and you're, a lot of times the crises don't happen in your office, right, or in the classroom. Sometimes they're like in the middle of the school or in a common area or playground or lunch or something. So if something happens, if you have those posters everywhere, if you're surrounded with this language, Um, then you could, you know, refer to it like, hey, remember, here's our poster. It's not like it's just one place in the school. So these constant visual reminders um, are extremely efficient in getting everyone familiar with self-regulation. Another thing that you can do is a classroom calm down corner. So this is great for self-regulation, but also if you want to use just coping skills in general, um, you know, make it fun. Have the teachers do like a mini workshop where you kind of train them on how to use the calm down corners. And then you can like assemble your boxes together with fun, you know, fidgets and posters and calm down tools and mindfulness strategies and make it like a fun toolbox assembly party. Um, and you know, if you, if, you don't think your teachers would be on board for that? You could just assemble little plastic tubs. I mean, you, what do you have, like max 30 teachers at your school or something? Just assemble little plastic tubs and then drop them off in each classroom and, you know, train them on how to use them. You could even just send out a video on how to use them if you don't think you're able to get everyone together for a in-person training. Um, but if you equip the teachers, you know, with a few posters and a few tools, I most teachers are really on board with this. Um and willing to try it because a lot of times they don't like when the student, you know, leaves the classroom and comes to your office and then you're like the fun person and they're the bad guy. That's just not uh, the best situation. So it's better for them to stay in class learning and to just take, you know, the five or 10 minutes they need in the calm down corner to regroup and get ready to learn. A note on calm down corners. I know sometimes I get pushback from teachers saying that it will be like a distraction and students will take advantage of using it to get out of doing work. And that's definitely a valid point, valid concern. Um, But I do believe it has to do with like the novelty of it. So at the beginning, yes, this may happen. But as they realize that it's just a tool for them to use, um, some of the fun goes away. So I would just educate them on how to properly use it, you know, monitor it, make sure kids are using it for proper use and not just playing around in there. And then after they get used to it, it will just be 
one more thing. And classrooms these days are beautiful. It's not like everyone's always doing the same thing. I love when I walk in a classroom and it's like we have some kids talking with a teacher in a group. Other kids are working independently. Other kids have already, you know, early finishers doing something else. So I feel like the classrooms kind of have their own. um, It's like its own little world in there and everyone has their own job. So I don't think it would be that weird. It's not like everyone's looking at the front getting lectured and then there's one student over there playing in the corner. And of course, this is what you're probably already doing, so this shouldn't be hard, but whatever school-wide initiative you're deciding on, um, so whether it's bullying prevention or self-regulation or relational aggression, um, whatever you're deciding to be proactive about and implement at your school, you're likely already doing it in the counseling realm. So for you, that's those three tiers of intervention, your MTSS supports your class lessons, your small groups, and your individual sessions. And then how I like to teach topics in these things is, you know, through games, through videos, through role play, through charades, through journaling, um, all of those engaging activities that we use in counseling sessions um, you can use to reinforce this concept. But the beauty of the school-wide initiative is that they're not hearing something one time. They're not only hearing it from one person, and they're getting continual support. So that's, you know, it's difficult when we're trying to teach a student self-regulation, and they're only coming to our class, you know, once a week, or to our office once a week for a small group. It's a lot easier if you can get everyone on board. So I would, you know, this is something you could even survey your teachers about. Um, You've likely already done your needs assessment at this point in the year, but maybe just send out like a mini needs assessment specific to this topic and say, hey, I'm trying to plan some school-wide initiatives. Um, What do you think like the highest needs are at our school? Or if you've already done a thorough needs assessment, you can go back and see what topics they wanted the most, ask your principal their thoughts, um, and then plan it out. So, you know, start by just doing like a teacher training, some visuals, some posters, some calm down kits, and then make sure that you are doing it through all three tiers as well. Oh, something I didn't mention is parent education. So while you're, you know, teaching your teachers how they can help students, also send home some literature to parents, you know, let them know what you're covering at school, how they can support their child. Um, You can do this through like a little newsletter, send them some video links or some talking points to go over with their child. Um, Not every parent will take advantage of this, but some might, and that would be awesome because then they're even getting the reinforcement at home. Like how beautiful would that be if everyone from home, school, and the community were all using that same language around like identifying your feelings, naming how you're feeling, and naming a possible coping strategy to calm down. That would be the dream, right? So start where you are. Um, I hope you found this motivating and not overwhelming. I would love to hear what school-wide initiatives you want to start at your school. Okay, guys. Well, thank you so much, and I'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to School Counseling Simplified. You can find the links from today's episode in the show notes. If you'd like to connect with Rachel, she's on Instagram and Teachers Pay Teachers at Bright Futures Counseling. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss any episodes of School Counseling Simplified. Talk to you next week.